I hate it when anybody makes a grand sweeping claim, but I'm going to do it. If you follow this approach, you will never forget anything you need, and you will always have thought through the things that you want. When I'm looking at a backpacking trip and starting to make that checklist in my mind, the first thing I have to do is understand the situation I'm going into. The conditions, the weather, the terrain, what it's going to look like. After I've gathered my requirements, I then need to look at the systems underneath that and build those out to meet the requirements for that trip. So the first thing I always start with is my shelter system. That shelter system is going to, for me, consist of an outside of the tent, an inside of the tent, because I always, for myself, I prefer a double wall tent. It's going to consist of the poles to support the tent, and it's consists of a way to secure the tent to the ground. Most commonly, that stakes. If I'm going on a hammock trip, it's the same thing. I have an outside of the tent, which is the fly or the tarp. I have an inside of the tent, which is the hammock itself. Instead of poles to support it, I have straps to support it, and I still have stakes for that tarp. So no matter what, I'm going to have an outer, an inner, supports, and stakes. That's my shelter system regardless. Once my shelter system is all set aside and ready to get packed up, I'm going to move on to my sleep system. My sleep system is always going to consist of two pieces, bottom insulation and top insulation. In a tent, my bottom insulation is going to be a sleeping pad. In a hammock, my bottom insulation is going to be my underquilt. And regardless of whether I'm in a tent or a hammock, my top insulation is going to be a top quilt. That meets the requirements of the temperatures I'm expecting and that I've tested. The third system that I want to make sure I run through my checklist for is going to depend on what I'm going to bring to eat or drink. That's my food and water system, and it consists of food and water storage, food and water preparation, and food and water consumption. For me, that is going to be my ursac to store food safely, and some smart water bottles to store the water, because they're light and pretty indestructible. After that, I need a way to prepare my food and water. Depending on the trip I'm going on, my food prep will be a little bit different, but for most trips, it's going to consist of a stove, a pot, and some fuel. For water preparation, what I'll do is I will bring my Catadine Bee Free water filter with a two liter water flask thing that fits onto the Bee Free, which brings us to food consumption and one of the most often forgotten things in any cook system, food system, any backpacking trip, and that's a spoon. For me, I make sure to include consumption in part of the way that I plan my gear so that I never forget a spoon. <laughs> After I've got those three systems taken care of, I will move on to whatever is left of the 10 essentials. Realistically, that leaves me with a few things. Sun protection, navigation, a light, the ability to make fire, a knife. There are also three items that don't normally fit on the essentials list that I make sure to bring with me on every trip. The first one is bear spray. The next one is some extra power cables and some extra power for my navigation system, for my headlamp, for my phone. All of those things require power and this comes with me on every trip. And finally, the last non-essential essential is gonna be my poop kit. So that's four down. The fifth system that I go through before I get to the comfort items and considering what else I wanna bring is going to be my layering system. When I approach my layering system, I think of it really specifically when it comes to, I want to have a base layer, I want to have a mid layer, I want to have an insulation layer, I want to have an outer layer, 
and then I want to have a sleep layer. For each of those layers, I'm going to consider what I'm going to bring for my head, for my top, for my bottoms, for my feet, and for my hands. More often than not, my base layer is going to be my hiking shirt that I'm going to wear, and a hat, as well as my underwear and my socks. My mid layer could just be my shorts. That could be the only thing I have for my mid layer. Everything else is against my skin as a base layer. Then I'll consider the insulation layer. Now, I might want to bring a fleece, depending on the weather. I might want to bring my puffy jacket. It's down, it compresses better. Uh, I might want to bring a toque for insulation. I might want to bring some extra socks for insulation. I might want to bring some pants over top of my shorts for insulation. I might want to bring gloves to put on my hands. I'm going to consider insulating all of those areas. For an outer layer, it's pretty simple. I'm going to bring rain pants, possibly, depending on the shorts or pants that I'm going to wear. I'm going to bring shoes, obviously. I might bring my gaiters, my Dirty Girl gaiters, just in case as an outer layer. I might also bring a rain jacket, and maybe I'll bring a bug net as an outer layer too, who knows? And for a sleep layer, I will always bring a little beanie, I'll bring a clean top, clean bottoms, and clean socks. Typically my hands don't get a sleep layer. Now that we've been through the five key systems that we need to pack for, we've set all that gear aside, what we need to do is we need to look at our options for the things that we want to bring to keep us comfortable. And I personally break those down into three categories. The first one is hygiene. You get to decide if it's worth bringing toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, soap, a loofah, Listerine, Whatever it is, you get to decide how hygienic you want to be based on how much room you have and how much weight you want to carry. The next category of comfort items is entertainment. Do I want to bring my headphones? Do I want to bring a book? Do I want to bring my Kindle? Do I want to bring the things I need to build a big fire to sit around and enjoy all night? Because that means that I might need to bring things to process wood. Do I want to bring card games? Am I going with some other people? Do we want to bring... I don't know, pin the tail on the donkey to play in the back country. I don't know. Whatever you want to do for entertainment, you get to decide if it's worth adding those things into your bag. And the final category of extras is comfort. Do I want to bring a chair? Do I want to bring a pillow? Do I want to bring my comfy blankie that I've had since I was 10 that has never spent a night without me? What do you want to bring for your own comfort? You get to decide that every time. But if you take this approach to it, you will have everything you need first, and then you will have the chance to consider what things you need for entertainment, for hygiene, and for comfort. Now that we have a list of stuff, we need to pack it. So let's go through how I pack my bag once I've got that pile of gear for my checklist set aside. The first thing I pack is always gonna be the things that I wanna keep dry. And I do that by taking this Nylofume pack liner, Nylofume, Nyl, this Nylofume pack liner and putting it into my bag. And then I take the gear I want to keep dry and put it in there. I start with the last thing I'm gonna take out. And that's gonna be my sleep clothes. So I've got some socks, a beanie, a top, and some pants here. That's what I'm gonna sleep in every night and it's gonna stay at the bottom of my dry bag. The next thing I always wanna keep dry is going to be my top insulation. So I'm gonna pack in my top quilt. After I've packed my top insulation, I wanna make sure I also pack my bottom insulation and keep it dry. For this trip coming up though, it's gonna be a sleeping pad. After I've got my bottom insulation and my top insulation in my dry bag, I also wanna put in the inside of my shelter system. Whether that's the mesh inner for my X-Mid or whether that's the hammock and hammock straps that I wanna keep dry in my dry bag. And what I'll do is I'll take the inside separately stick it into its own stuff sack 
and then put it into the Nilo Fume Pack Liner. That way it just keeps things from getting a little bit dirty, the inside of my tent stays dry, but it's also up against the ground and I don't want that dirt on my sleep system. I don't want it on my under quilt, I don't want it on my top quilt, I don't want it on my sleep clothes. So I usually put those in a separate dry bag inside the dry bag. The last thing that I'm gonna put in my dry bag is going to be my insulation layer, specifically if it's down. So for this next trip coming up, I'm just gonna bring a fleece. So let's stick that in here. After that, I close it up just by wrapping the top together, squishing the air out and spinning it and tucking the top down. After I've got my dry bag packed, I'm gonna pack my food stuff, my food, my food bag, my cook system and my food consumption, as well as any hygiene items that might be smelly because they're gonna end up in the bear bag hung anyway. So I'll pack toothpaste, toothbrush, those kind of things in here as well. Any of my hygiene items will go in my food bag. That typically then gets put right up against my bag. Then comes the miscellaneous stuff. And I just use this cheap little water bag, waterproof stuff sack that I got off Amazon. I think it was like three bucks. So I'll put my extra power in there with my extra cable. I'll put my fire starting kit in there. I'll put my first aid kit in there. I'll put my headlamp in there. Then I'll roll it up and put that in my bag as well, just in the main compartment, loose. Then I start to pack the things that I carry on the outside of my bag. Let's start with the things that I attach to the bag. That's gonna be my bear spray and my GPS device. I have a slot on my shoulder strap for my bear spray and the GPS device actually starts clipped onto my shoulder strap and typically I clip it onto one of my belt loops later in the day just because I don't want to have it on my shoulder. Next I'm going to start putting things on the outside of my pack. And that's going to be things like my water storage and my water filter. Most backpacks will come with pockets on the sides that are pretty standard and suited for your water bottle. I tend not to carry water in this very often, so what I'll do is I will put the lid on, squeeze the air out, secure it, and I will tuck that in the outside mesh pocket on the back so that I can get at it really quickly and easily whenever we hit a stream. In that main pocket on the back, I will also keep sunscreen and bug spray and my trowel. The other pieces of my poop kit the whizzy wipes and the hand sanitizer typically go in one of my hip belt pockets. My stakes go in one of my side pockets. And since the side pockets on this bag are so big, I also wrap up the outer of my shelter and keep it in the other side pocket. Finally, my outer layer, so my rain gear, is going to go on the outside of my pack as well, typically in that big mesh pocket at the back for quick access. After that, you've got nothing left to pack. So you've got all of your essentials packed in that bag and you can go about adding whatever comfort, entertainment or hygiene items that you wanna bring that may not already be in there. Now you know how I pack my bag and how I create my checklist every time for every trip. And if you take that approach to understand your conditions, pack those five systems, and then really consider the comfort items you want to bring, you will never forget anything and you will always have the things that you considered that you wanted to have on that trip. The reason that this is so effective is that when you lay out all your gear based on the systems that you need and then you pack it all, you realize that everything that was on the floor in that pile needs to go in the bag. So if you forget something, it's already on the floor. Like I did shooting this video, I forgot to put the tent poles in, the tent pole in, and the trekking pole. So those would be the things that are left on the ground that you go, oh, if I didn't do it this way, I would have forgotten those things.